The teenage years, as you may be able to remember from your own, are often characterised by the experience of volatile emotions. We've already learnt on this course why teenagers' behaviour is so driven by their emotions. Because the emotional part of their brain is the dominant part and is not yet connected up with the still maturing thinking brain, which later in life helps us to be less reactive to things. I'm sure we can all think of times when our teenagers have been happy and engaged one minute and grumpy and distant the next. But how do we tell the difference between typical teenager grumpiness and disengagement and something else? Something that may indicate a deeper, more troubling struggle with their mood. Everyone feels low in their mood at times and depression is certainly one of the most common types of mental health illness globally. Contrary to what we might like to believe, teenagers and even young children as well as adults can sadly suffer with depression. According to the World Health Organization, depression is the fourth leading cause of illness and disability in adolescents aged 15 to 19 years. It's thought to affect between 5 and 8% of adolescents and many adults who are suffering with depression will state that difficulties with their illness began when they were in adolescence. So in this lesson, we're going to learn how you as parents can distinguish between that kind of normal low mood in your teenager and what may be signs that they're experiencing depression. We're going to think about some of the symptoms of depression in teenagers and about what commonly contributes to them experiencing such difficulties with their mental health. And we're going to learn about what is happening in your teenager's brain when they are experiencing low mood. We are then going to offer you some ideas and strategies for how you can help your teenager at times of such struggles. This may not be an easy lesson to listen to at times. If you have suspicions that your teenager may be experiencing depression, or perhaps even feel sure that they are, you're likely to feel incredibly worried about them. If you're not sure how you might feel about listening to this lesson at this time, perhaps come back to it at, at a later date, or make sure that you have some good support around you to help with anything that it might bring up. Equally, if you or someone else are concerned about your teenager's mental health, we would strongly advise that you seek additional professional help alongside this lesson. This course is not sufficient to replace professional support where needed, but it is intended to help build your awareness and understanding so that you can make accurate judgments and decisions around how much support is needed moving forwards. So what are the signs of depression in teenagers? As the teenage years can be some of the most emotionally challenging years of our lives, it's important that we're able to notice and recognize when our teenagers may be struggling over and above what we may consider to be normal for this period of their development. They are often moody and uncommunicative, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are depressed. Their behavior can be just part of typical adolescence related to hormonal changes, brain development, and trying to find their place in the world. Difficulties managing teenage emotions can, at the best of times, be disruptive socially, academically and behaviourally for them. At worst, experiences of low mood can result in isolation and loneliness, dropping out of school and an increased risk of dangerous coping strategies including drinking and drug taking, self-harm and even suicide. It's not unusual for low mood in teenagers to also coexist with other difficulties, most commonly that's anxiety, but also other mental health difficulties such as eating disorders. In younger children, depression can present as more physical, with complaints of tummy aches, sickness or headaches. In teenagers, some of the common signs of depression include experience of a low mood that doesn't lift, being irritable, losing interest in things they previously found pleasure in, and being tired a lot of the time. Your teenager may also have trouble sleeping, or may sleep more than usual. Their appetite may have reduced, or you may notice them comfort eating. They may find it difficult to concentrate at school and hence their performance and engagement in education deteriorates. They may be indecisive or appear to be lacking in confidence. They may withdraw from friends or interact less with the family. They may talk even about feeling numb or shut down or they may express feelings of guilt or worthlessness. Or they may have expressed thoughts of self-harm or suicide or actually self-harmed or be engaging in other unhealthy, risky behaviours such as drug use or excessive drinking. 
So what might be going on in your teenager to cause them to be experiencing low mood or depression? The answer to this question is perhaps threefold. Firstly, like other illnesses, there's a genetic component to depression, making your teenager more vulnerable if there's a family history of depression or other mental health difficulties. Secondly, there are studies of the brain that suggest changes in both the structure and chemical makeup of the teenage brain that increases their risk for developing depression. The areas implicated are those we've mentioned previously in other lessons on this course, the amygdala, the emotional centre, the striatum, which is involved in the experience of reward, the prefrontal cortex, the thinking brain, and the hippocampus, which is involved in learning and memory. Studies have shown that these areas are structurally different in teenagers and adults with depression, with a complex relationship existing between the brain, gender, and other factors of vulnerability. Linked to these structural changes are alterations in the brain chemical serotonin. Serotonin is known as one of the brain's happy chemicals because of its connection to our mood. It's also thought to impact on memory and learning, sleep and appetite, so we can start to see why it may be connected to depression when we cross-reference this to the, symptom, to, to the symptoms. Research has shown that higher levels of serotonin in the brain are linked to elevated mood and conversely, lower levels are linked to low mood and depression. So consequently, medical treatment of depression can include drugs that increase levels of serotonin in the brain. Thirdly, there are a range of social factors that are associated with depression. These include family conflict or breakdown, bereavement, feeling rejected, left out, or not having a sense of belonging. They may include problems with school or exam pressures, friendship difficulties, issues relating to identity, whether around sexuality, gender, or generally. There may be physical illness in themselves or assuming a caring role for others, low self-esteem, bullying, trauma or abuse or poverty. Sometimes depression can be considered as a response to a specific event, in which case it may pass with the resolution of that specific situation and may not cause great concern. Other times, it may be a more complex interaction of experiences that may be longer lasting or reoccur over time. So what should you do if you think your teenager is depressed? If you or someone else is worried that your teenager is experiencing depression, it's really important to seek advice from a professional. This may be your GP or physician in the first instance, and they can then guide you to further services that may be able to offer support. If your teenager is over 16, they have the right to go to a doctor on their own and for conversations to be kept confidential. If they're under 16, they can still consent to their own treatment if they are believed to have capacity and competence to fully appreciate and understand what's involved in that treatment and what the implications are. Evidence-based guidelines that are available in the UK suggest that treatment for depression in young people should range from monitoring in the case of mild depression through to psychological therapy and or medication in severe cases. If you go down the route of seeking support through therapy, remember that you may not find the right therapist straight away. The effectiveness of therapy largely comes from the relationship that can be formed between the therapist and their patient. So your teenager may have to try out a few different therapists before they find the one that makes them feel comfortable and safe. This is not unusual. They may also want to experiment with different forms of therapy and again, this is not unusual. If you go down the route of medication, Make sure you and your teenager are clear about both the benefits and any side effects so that this is an informed decision that's being made. And if they require to take medication during the day, when at school perhaps, make sure that they feel comfortable doing this. They may need some help being reminded, so maybe they need an alert on their phone or a teacher to prompt them. With either of these options, it's really important to remember that things can get worse before they get better. So don't be alarmed if this is the case for your teenager. Speak with a professional involved if you're concerned with any worsening of symptoms and they will be able to advise you accordingly. As well as talking with a professional or seeking external support, it's also important to try and stay connected with your teenager and see if you can explore with them what might be going on to explain their symptoms. Going back to using those principles we learnt previously about in part two of this course, curiosity, acceptance and empathy, we can create a safe space for them to share what they feel may be going on. 
Are they aware they're having struggles? Have they noticed maybe some of the same signs that you have perhaps noticed? Do they have any ideas why this might be? Are you able to collaboratively come up with ways of perhaps taking away or reducing the source of the low mood? Remember, the importance is in using a non-judgmental, non-evaluative approach, not asking too many questions or being dismissive, but sitting with the difficult feelings and showing them that you can help and contain all of those difficult feelings that they're experiencing. If they're struggling to have these kinds of conversations with you, perhaps see if there's someone else they would feel comfortable talking with. This might be a family friend, a relative, teacher, or another professional. Also, trust your gut feeling. You know your teenager better than anyone else. And if they're finding it difficult to open up to you, and low mood will make this harder than it would be normally, go with what your gut is telling you might be going on, and don't ignore it. You can also hold in mind lifestyle changes that will benefit the brain without use of medication. So we can increase our levels of serotonin by engaging in things like physical exercise, meditation, being outside and getting fresh air and sunshine, and maintaining a healthy diet that specifically incorporates foods containing the amino acid tryptophan. These include eggs, spinach and salmon as some examples. There are also other opportunities that you can create for your teenager that might help with their mood. They may be initially reluctant to get engaged with some of these because of their low mood, but creating opportunities for them to stay engaged with friends or re-engage with activities they used to enjoy or even starting new activities that will give them a sense of purpose, achievement and goals. This will all help. Some teenagers would benefit from having a weekly schedule where maybe you timetable in specific activities to ensure that they're being built into their week. Just remember to start small, however, so your teenager doesn't feel overwhelmed and they feel that this is something they can work towards or achieve so that doesn't feed in further into their negative beliefs about themselves. They might also like making a soothe box that contains things that they know make them feel a little bit better. You can think about all the senses when doing this and include nice things to smell, touch, listen to, look at or taste. An alternative to this is to make a box or have a notepad where they can write down their feelings or their thoughts. Doing this helps to understand feelings better and through this helps those feelings to feel more manageable. You might then offer your teenager a time each week or day when they share what they have been writing and then you can talk this through with them and see if you can help them with anything. Alongside these strategies, we can take ideas from one of the models of therapy used with depression, that of cognitive behavioural therapy or CBT. The idea of CBT is that our thoughts, behaviours, emotions and bodily sensations are all connected. When we're depressed, negative feelings can feed into negative thoughts, which are experienced in our body as well as expressed in our behaviours. So the principle behind this therapy is that because all of these things are connected, if we can change one, then the others will follow suit. Therefore, if you can gently challenge some of the negative thoughts that your teenager may be having, for example, maybe by encouraging them to look at the evidence or lack of for those thoughts, you can then change the associated feelings, bodily sensations and behaviours. Sometimes, negative thoughts or unhelpful thinking patterns can be quite easily shifted. Other times, they may stem from what we call core beliefs, more deep-rooted ideas about the self that may originate earlier in life or from specific events that have occurred. So negative thoughts that we might see in depression can include things like believing yourself not to be good enough or lovable. And unhelpful thinking patterns that we see in depression include catastrophizing, overgeneralizing or jumping to conclusions. You can gently start to challenge these with experiments to see whether there's any evidence to believe that these things are true. These experiments might be conducted on the basis of evidence or information that you already have available to you and your teenager. Or you might have to test out the hypothesis by creating a situation to see what the evidence shows you. Typically, what you find is that there's more evidence to the contrary of these beliefs or thinking styles. And you can then encourage your teenager to shift into something more balanced or positive. So instead, they can hold the thought that they do make mistakes, but also they get things right. Or perhaps not everyone will like them, but some people certainly do. Or they may become more aware of their tendency to catastrophize, for example, and then be able to develop strategies to stop themselves when they feel that they're going into that thinking pattern. Finally, it's important that alongside the support you can offer your teenager, you find ways of looking after yourself too. 
Try not to blame yourself. This isn't always easy, but remember what we've learned in previous lessons. That sometimes we need to look at how something is making us feel first, as this will then determine how we are able to respond to our teenager. If you're upset or angry at them even for what's happening, you're going to find it harder to empathise with them or offer them safety and connection. Remember also that if you have significant concerns, there are services out there to help. This is not something that you have to manage on your own. It's much better to seek help and then be reassured that you may not need that help than to wait or not ask for it at all and then things escalate. So hopefully this lesson has helped you to be more aware and have more understanding of your teenager's mood. It's hoped that you now have a better idea of whether your teenager ex is experiencing the typical ebb and flow of adolescent emotions or whether they maybe need some additional support. And if the latter, this lesson has hopefully given you some practical ideas and strategies for how you might be able to support them to experience more positive emotional well-being. Remember, if listening to this lesson has brought up difficult things for you, please do seek some support or find a way of looking after yourself now. And as with our previous lessons, if you feel comfortable doing so, please share any of your observations, experiences or thoughts with us in the comments. We'd love to hear about your experiences with your teenager and how you're finding these lessons help you to understand and relate to them better. Thanks so much for watching and we'll look forward to seeing you for the next lesson.